Hey all, Dirk here from Dirk's Dystopia. I'm trying to uh, do a little bit more of some how-to videos uh, and today I just finished up filming a how-to uh, kind of kit bash basic conversion 101. Not sure exactly what I'm calling it, um, but I'm working on getting myself a, a word bearer Diabolist. It's not a model for it, uh, so I pulled some models together uh, to create my own version of it. I think I did the last count was like, there's like five or six, or maybe seven different sets um, to get all the pieces that I wanted for this model. So um, just finished uh, filming the how-to part. Uh, they're gonna show you step-by-step -step what that looks like um, from start to, start to end. Uh, so you have a completed model at the end. I'm not gonna paint it for this, but uh, all the conversion and, and uh, fitting pieces and stuff. Uh, along the way, I ended up inadvertently uh, inventing a stupid drinking game, uh, and you'll, as you'll see as you watch, but uh, it's humorous uh, as I fumble around with parts and things. So um, hopefully this works well for you. Leave a comment, let me know uh, if you'd like to see something more in depth or it wasn't quite clear, or if you use it and uh, you know create your own characters love to see uh, the progress moving forward and things like that. Um, should be fun. We're going to start with just a quick inventory of the tools that I generally like to have when I'm going to uh, do some kind of conversion or kit bashing. Um, most of these are pretty standard. I like to have uh, an edge cutter, um, little clippers. You can buy these at a hardware store, but the um, hobby, I think this one is Privateer Press or P3. Um, it's nice just to be able to get stuff off the sprues or get the large chunks of plastic off. You'll see in a little bit we're going to do some hand swaps, weapon swaps to hands, and this helps to, to get close to that without having to chop away at it with a hobby knife. This is your hobby knife, also an X-Acto knife. Helps to have a nice fresh blade on there. Um, it makes cutting easier. If your blade gets dull, that's when it's easier to cut yourself. Obviously you want the miniature pieces that you're going to work with. This here is um, um, poster putty, blue tack, whatever you want to call it. I like to use little pieces of this to stick the model together uh, as I'm doing the conversion kit bashing so I don't glue something and then realize I didn't want it there. I want to move it a little bit. This kind of helps for posing and figuring that stuff out. Last but not least, I'll have two separate glues. One's going to be, uh, I love this uh, Gorilla Glue, the gel, the super glue gel. Um, it's a little bit thicker and it works really well with this kind of stuff and then just your standard plastic glue I happen to have the Citadel plastic glue. I do like this applicator uh, When I remember to put the lid on when I forget then it clogs up and it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to use but um, Yeah, this is a good one So they're sitting just off screen. So they're not I'm not too cluttered here That's our uh, Inventory and then I do have a cutting mat um, some of this may require cutting and I want to just kind of preserve my This is what we're playing. I'm working on my gaming table, too So I play games on here. I don't want it all chopped up. So um, Those are kind of the desired things. Not all of them are mandatory. Honestly, you could probably get away with whatever glue you want and um, this uh, hobby knife and do just fine but I find this other stuff makes it easy enough to, to make it worth the initial expenditure. Um, and just to note, I do have two separate kinds of glue here because uh, for this project, we're gonna be working with resin uh, and um, Citadel plastic. Um, that plastic glue work, works great if you're bonding the plastic to another piece of plastic, it works amazing. Uh, but once we bring this resin into play, it will absolutely just not work. Um, it will not bond, it won't melt the plastic. So um, the super glue is for that as well. So this is where we are with our inventory. Um, I will try to get it flashing on the screen as well, just so everybody kind of has um, uh, a little bit of a visual look at it all. Okay, with our inventory out of the way, uh, first step in any of this kind of stuff when you're working on this is we're just gonna go through and clean all the flash off. Uh, I will do it on video just so everybody can kind of see my um, procedure, but um, you know I will go through a kind of a time lapse so that it's not just a painful watching me do this kind of stuff. So here we go. 
Uh, I'm gonna go through, I guess I'm just gonna start with the head. I don't really have a, a preference for this, but uh, if you notice the head I've chosen here has a big old giant chunk of plastic uh, on the bottom that's gotta go away because I do want that rounded piece to fit down into the neck piece. So I'm just gonna pop that off. And then once that's off, we're gonna grab that hobby knife and we're just gonna trim it up so it's a rounder, smooth um, ball. And just kind of keep traversing around as we do that. It doesn't have to be super clean on that part. Uh, it will get glued to the uh, body, the chest piece. And then I'm just kind of taking a look around. It looks like maybe this was attached to the sprue here. So I'm just gonna clean this up. It's a horn, <clears throat> so a little bit of rough texture is certainly isn't gonna hurt much, but I always hate when I start to paint a model, it's already been primed, and then I start to notice flash pieces or pieces of the sprue that are still stuck to it. So we'll try to avoid as much of that as possible because by that point it's it's hard to do anything. It looks like there's another little spot here. So it looks like he was joined, the head was joined from the neck and then there was a horn, uh, two pieces of the sprue stuck to the horn. There's a little bit of a mold line here on the side. I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out a little bit. Again, I'm not too worried about it due to its location. Um, it's not gonna be a huge deal, but I don't want it to pop up later and be noticeable. Uh, once I have this smoothed out, we're done with the head. I think we'll just kind of move right down to the chest piece. Uh, actually, we'll move to the backpack because that happens to be next. So I'm just gonna slide the head up uh, a little bit so I kind of know that's all done and out of the way. I don't have to pick it up and try to look for more. Okay, I filmed myself removing all the mold lines and talked through every single step, every single little tiny piece. But at the end of the day, I don't think that was going to be useful or at all interesting for people to watch. If, if you're really just broken up because you don't get to see me cutting off the mold lines and talk about it as I go, let me know and we can uh, we can figure something out because I have all the footage but uh, I was going through it and it was almost 30 minutes of me cutting off flashing and uh, extra nubs it wasn't worth it big takeaway to the whole thing is cut very carefully shave lot off little bits at a time don't t try and take big chunks off at a time it's really really hard to put plastic back on once it's gone or resin so Take your time with this and uh, enjoy the rest of the time lapse of me taking care of this. And uh, yeah, that's that's what this is gonna look like. All right, we're back. I grabbed a couple things. Uh, we do have a base here. Uh, I set it down flat, so now I have to slide it all the way to the end here so I can pick it up. Uh, and then I also, this is my um, little tool. Uh, people sometimes pin things to corks to hold on to while they're painting. Other people, the GW does make a nice tool. Um, that little, uh, that you can clip the model into. Uh, but I just use this. Uh, my dog has um, allergies. Uh, so I have a ton of these bottles. I think I have maybe 30 
over there. Um, so I've just put some pea gravel in here for a little bit of weight, and then I'm just pressing the base onto the top here. And then I can hold on to this. And then with that pea gravel in there, it doesn't get knocked over as easy as I knock the whole thing over. Uh, but that's my system for holding on to my models. And then what I'm gonna do, uh, this is not gonna be his final base. I base all mine on uh, some other bases. So um, I don't have to worry. I'm gonna glue the uh, legs right there. So what I'm gonna do, shake up the gel glue real good. Screw it up, unscrew the lid. And then I'm going to take the, um, so this, this leg set happens to have a nice flat portion of the um, foot and then kind of one that where it's raised a little bit. I'm just gonna looking to get one dab of glue onto the flat portion here. Um, it doesn't need to be a lot, uh, but sometimes I'm a little bit at the mercy of what comes out of the there. So I'm just, this is working great on camera actually. Uh, just a little bit of a dab so there's a little tiny dot on there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Not much. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid back on my super glue now. I can learn, it's slow, but I can. Um, so with that one little dab on there, we're gonna go ahead and flip that upside down and just kind of stick them somewhere in the middle of the base. I'm not super worried about um, positioning yet because he's gonna get popped off. With that one small dab of super glue he should actually pop off that base pretty easily after he's done painting and i'm ready to uh get him onto the uh, permanent base so that's how i do that we're just going to let that hang out for a second and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start using this poster putty and you don't need a ton of it at a time um, to get this to work um, so i'm going to use i just have a little tiny piece on my my finger here uh, and then if I flip this guy upside down, I'm just going to stick that in there. Use my hobby knife a little bit just to press it in there. You don't want to put too much in there. Um, but because um, you got to dig it out later when we're ready to glue. Uh, so I'm hoping that super glue is set up pretty well on here. And then we're going to just take this and press him on. Now, this isn't... Um, ever going to be a super secure hold. Um, I'm not going to have him do any acrobat work or anything like that, but um, for poseability it works fairly well as this fights me. Um, so in this case uh, I'm not sure that the, there's quite enough to fill in the gap there. So, Or it's making too big of a gap. I'm not sure which. It might actually be making too big of a gap. So we're just going to add a little bit more till we get what we're looking for. There we go. Now that's stuck on there. So at least I can start um, posing him and figuring out what I want, uh, arms and stuff. Hey, there we go. Let's put that on camera. I can start posing him and uh, we can feel like we're uh, getting an accurate picture of where he is without um, gluing things in place. Uh, we're going to go ahead and snag another chunk of this. I want to be kind of careful in this spot, so I'm going to put his uh, backpack on. Um, so he's got uh, holes in there, and there is a little bit of holes in the um, back of the torso, uh, the chest piece here. So we just don't want to jam too much of this in there. We'll have to dig it out later. Um, so there is the backpack. Just trying to look at it quick and see if I have it roughly straight. I do not. Um, so there is our backpack stuck on there. This guy is going to look good when he's done. I'm super excited. And then, time to throw the head on there. All right, so <clears throat> again, try and keep in mind with the poster putty filling in there, it's not always um, exactly where it's gonna end up, but um, there's a good start of what we're looking at, what we're thinking about here. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at the arms. We're gonna get the arms on there. So the way I have this um, now, it was actually, wasn't exactly all the arms that I wanted. I had a kind of a slightly different picture in my head. Um, but we're going to start with this and then I may end up doing some other arms or chopping and posing. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to keep this a relatively simple project um, for the video. But um, we'll see. So we're just sticking the arm on there. Again, I'm not super uh, worried about it. And then in this case, we're just going to use the imagination and we're actually going to stick um, the wrong hand on the um, arm. 
Um, so the, he will have two left hands, but be on the other arm, just so I can um, get an idea of uh, looks and things like that before I start chopping. Just sticking that shoulder pad on. Oops, backpack came off. So you're gonna have some of that. Like I said, this poster putty isn't super permanent type stuff. Um, and especially as you keep jostling about, he's, he might lose stuff. Uh, but for now, we're going to uh, keep keep plugging away. It'll be fine. Uh, if you hear me start swearing, then you know that uh, we might not be fine. So just trying to keep uh, the right amount of poster putty. So we can, so, so it will stick to my finger more than the model. That's definitely what I want. There we go. So we're taking the second arm, sliding it down here. There we go. That's exactly what I was trying to do. That's all right. Gives me a chance. So I'm just going to go ahead and push the shoulder pad on there a little bit more. Um, kind of reminds me of playing with Play-Doh when I was a kid, actually. Pushing really hard and then other things fall off. Or Legos even, really. Um, it's all right. We got this. We're gonna go ahead and <laughs> uh, you gotta press just hard enough to uh, get the poster putty to stick, but not so hard that you pop other pieces off. Um, so there we go. Good. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and stick his head back in. Maybe it'll stay. Maybe it won't. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, I gotta get this shoulder pad on, so I get another little piece of this uh -huh. slide this in see if I can no I didn't think so I think it was so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take the arm off uh, and then push it onto the shoulder pad so that they at least act like one unit kind of like this other one does um, here so at least we have that so I'll slide this out of the way That tucks in there. We're getting there. We're getting there. This one tucks in here. He's going to be pointing the gun a little bit. Trying to uh, press both of them equally. Um, all right, so here's the weird spot where it's, uh, A, the poster punny is not going to get completely hidden by the uh, gun and the arm, uh, stuck on the arm, and it's going to be on the wrong hand. So putting a, a blob of it there. Uh, you know what, normally I don't have this much uh, trouble with the poster putty, honestly. Um, we're just gonna take this off as a unit. Head was gonna fly off, that's definitely. Uh, so there we go. Now the problem is gonna be to keep this on here as I press. And it did not. Okay, I don't know why I'm bothering to stick the head back in here. There's zero chance it's going to stay, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to just try and get the sword to stay on long enough so I can show you guys the final um, plan here. Um, so just blob of putty on there. And this. Nope. Okay, so he's going to kind of have the sword jutted out front. Shoulders and arms aren't exactly where we want them. You can see this one's a little low on the... Well, we're just going to knock the whole thing off, so it's fine. We'll have a chance to fix that in a second. This should be fun at home. You can turn this into a drinking game. Every time something falls off, we, uh, we take a drink. And we would all be plastered by now, so... I'm just going to try and again stick these together as a unit um, and then maybe I'll have a little bit better luck with it staying on long enough uh, and before I press that on there I'm going to go ahead and try to get the uh, backpack on roughly kind of straight. Ah. There's just not a ton of surface area um, for the sword to kind of make contact. So we may end up not doing that 
uh, post your putty in there um, and hope that super glue has a better uh, chance of it later when we get to that step. Uh, chances of all of this sticking at once. Okay. Um, so uh, he's a little bit off kilter. I'm just going to take a look at him myself. Uh, the head and torso are tilted back and I'm afraid to do too much with them. Uh, but there we go. So that's kind of the rough idea we're looking for um, to have as a final product with uh, it being much smoother and straighter when we're done. So that's what we're going to end up with at the end. So when we come back, uh, he will be in pieces again and we will start the build uh, from the ground up. Um, I think um, we may actually start with the arms. Yeah, we'll start, we'll start with them the ground up. So we'll start back at his legs. He'll be back to that. But that's the ultimate goal. And I like the poster putty. It is a little frustrating to deal with. But at least I have kind of a rough idea of um, are these arms going to work? Uh, I do believe that I can make all of this work um, for this character long term. So that's what that is. I will see you in a bit. There's a drink. There's a drink. I'll see you in a bit. All right, now that we have fumbled around a little bit with the um, poster putty, kind of have a rough idea of what we're looking for, we're going to start assembling the model. So I have just the legs glued to the base, um, just to give myself a stable platform to work from. Um, I'm not trying to hold on to the legs as I do this. Uh, when I get uh, closer into assembly, I will stick them on my uh, base here so that I have a little bit better handle. But for now, uh, we just have the legs on the base and this is not my permanent base, this is a short-term base so that I can work on it, paint it, and then I'll, he'll get popped off there and put on a regular one. Um, rather than starting from here and building up, I'm gonna go ahead and skip to uh, dealing with the most difficult part of this build, which is gonna be the hand swap between uh, the Serpenta and the Bolter. I'll go through what that looks like and then um, for once that's done and solid, then we'll build the model from the ground up, from the legs up, and uh, work on that. So, two pieces we have to do. One is a little bit of um, rough cutting to get the hand out of the bolter. Uh, the nice thing about this one is that it is, um, you don't care about the rest of the bolter, so you can be a little bit more um, deliberate with your cuts. You can just do it. So what I'm gonna do what I essentially want to do is I want to save the finger. Let me get a, a sharper point here. Uh, I want to save the finger coming through here and the trigger guard. And then we want to cut through um, and then shave the top off of the hand here that where it butts up against the gun. So I want just this piece right here from here all the way over to here. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and get out. Um, I can't use the side cutters to make those two cuts uh, and just clip clip and be done uh, because the side cutters are a little brutal and, and not quite exacting enough and if I try and cut right here it's actually going to cut part of the tip of the finger off here and it'll cut into the hand here. So what I have to do is back up from the cut a little bit and leave some extra there that I'll shave off with the X-Acto knife here. Um, so little bit by little bit in stages. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and line the cutter up to, to like again just leave that little bit. And I'm going to start here. I've done this a couple times. I found that this works the best. Um, so yeah, and you got to kind of be careful because again this is you know one shot. I'm going to go ahead and get this um, gun magazine, the extra ammunition or the, the ammunition uh, clip out of the way. Boom, that's gone, don't care about it. Now I don't have to deal with that. I'm gonna actually chop off, so this isn't gonna be the final cut, um, but I'm gonna just chop off a big chunk of the barrel. Do it on camera there. Um, so there, now we're down to just this little piece here. I wanna get closer than this though. Um, I don't wanna shave off a ton of um, extra stuff with the knife if I don't have to. So if you notice here, you'll see a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna carefully, I don't just, um, kind of 
put it where it's going to where I think it's going to be and clip hard. I kind of put it in there and squeeze a little bit on the handle to see where the pressure is going to take it. Um, so I think I have it set in a decent spot. Clip through, boom. So now if you look, we've got just the tip of the finger and just the trigger guard right here. A little bit of cleanup right here. We'll take that out of there. Um, this is a little trickier with this little nub here. It always gets a little, um, because if I try to clip on top of the nub, it's most likely going to try and pull one way or the other. Um, I'm going to try, I've done this again a few times. You may actually have to, to try like on the back side of the nub here and shave off extra. But if you're really careful and just really don't drop your piece and really thoughtful about the cut you're going to make, you can get away with trying to, to go right through this nub, which is what I'm going to go with here. Um, and it really wants to go down into the hand. All right, so here we have just the hand um, done. Um, uh, it's a little bit tricky to hold on to. I probably should have put it on a, uh, should have drilled a hole in the wrist into the hand here and put it on a paper clip or something. But I'm just gonna go through and clean up now and, and just kind of double check and see what I ended up with. Um, for the most part, I think this worked out really well. I think this is exactly what I need, which is good. So if you notice, you can see where it actually cut. There was only um, contact here and here, right through to that trigger guard right there. This is uh, one of the better cuts I've done. I've done this weapon swap quite a number of times now. Um, but you know, sometimes it doesn't come across as good. Uh, you want to err on the side of leaving extra material and then just coming through and um, cl cleaning it up with the exacto knife just like this. It's not really that time consuming to, to come back and do that. So really work on that patience and work on trying to um, take your time on that cut. See if I can get a decent without my fat fingers being in the way. So that's what we're looking at there. Um, we've got just the hand coming across the top, trigger guard down the front here. The rest of it's obviously just part of the model. But that's it. If I flip it over, it'll be upside down for you guys, but you can see exactly what we have right there. There's the finger coming through the trigger guard and folding back towards the thumb. So that's our hand. Pretty excited about that. That worked out well. Um, I do have to tell you though that that is the easy part of this conversion. So now what we have, um, once we have our hand, which I'll just get onto the, sorry, I'm trying to get it sitting in there. Now what we have, we have to get, we essentially have to remove this hand off the Serpenta, but I don't have the luxury of clipping the extra stuff out of the way because obviously, you know, this bit is resin. Um, it's not, I won't call it expensive. I think I paid three or four dollars for it, um, but I certainly don't want to spend three or four dollars and then wait um, two weeks to get it from Britain, Great Britain. Um, again so i have to be real careful trimming this hand piece out of here so i can glue this one back in um, and so what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to cut the hand here probably along the um right along the, the top ridge there and then i'll probably reach the clipper in and, and kind of trim in here um, done very carefully that part won't be so bad and then I'm gonna have to come in with the uh, exacto knife and shave line shave gradually stages down until this fits in there uh, without any extra stuff any extra issue so um, I'm gonna take this hold it carefully by the barrel and then I'm gonna bring the clippers in and again I just want to cut off a chunk of the hand um, without I don't want the, the clippers to slip if I'm on too much of a slope what will happen was I squeeze it, it'll pop down here and I'll cut into the gun itself Again, no bueno don't want to do that today um, so we're gonna back off here I'm gonna just take this chunk of the hand off good and always watch your eyes I'm not wearing eye protection now uh, but I do make sure I point it in a direction that eyes isn't gonna be an issue but if there's other people working near you um, or you're trying to look in real close, be careful that you don't pop this into your eyes. And then 
Again, I want to just trim into the, the trigger guard here. So I'm just going to take the clippers and clip in a little bit so that we have a line. You can see that line coming through. Um, I've left a little bit on this side here that I'll have to shave off because I don't really, I don't want to trust clipping the thing that close. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to come in and start shaving this out of here. Um, it's a resin, so it um, cuts fairly decent uh, and it just kind of layer by layer take it slow if you try to rush this that's when things slip and you either cut um, the wrong piece on the gun or your thumb either one not good not recommended so we're just going to take our time shaving layers off slices off it makes a little bit of a mess it's just kind of part of the hobby um, this is what it is i'm just going to again push in the knife into that cut so i know exactly where i need to cut to um, and then I'm just going to take little bits off. I got a little bit much here, so I'm going to back the cut off so I'm not... Um, I just don't want it to slip and, and slice my thumb open. I don't want to have to... I don't want to turn this into a how-to first aid hobby video. Um, so um, we're just going to... There we go. So if you notice, we've gotten a fair amount out. We're getting real close now. Um, and we're just going to slice in. We want to be... We want the trigger bar, trigger guard piece that I have uh, on the hand down here to butt right up against the gun itself in this area here. And we want nice a nice smooth flat area to glue to. We will not be able to use the um, plastic activated, the Citadel plastic glue for this. Um, I do like this stuff quite a bit when you're working plastic to plastic because it really just does kind of, it melts the plastic and bonds it. Not going to work for this because um, this piece here is resin, um, so it won't do the bonding. We're gonna have to actually use super glue. So you want a large flat area for the bond to happen on. Much super glue contact uh, as possible. Increase that surface area so that you can get a good bond. The reason I'm doing the gun uh, as the swap instead of the sword is that the sword tends to not have a ton of surface area. You know, if I cut here on the sword, hopefully you guys can see that. If I cut right across there, you're just gonna have that little tiny piece to bond uh, between the sword and, if, and the other hand that I would swap it to. And that's not gonna last. Um, a stray bump, uh, or if you're not thinking and you go ahead and pick the model up by that, it's just not gonna hold. Uh, even travel will just, just get really difficult, so. Um, this works a lot better. There's more surface area. You get this corner for everything to bond into and then another um, length coming up the gun here. So uh, let's see if I can show you this on here. Now you can see I have this flat edge here uh, and then what we we'll want to do is flatten this out here. I have kind of a little dip in there um, that I want to I want to go away as much as possible. So I'm just going to shave off this back end here to flatten this out. Um, it's not anything too drastic. I don't think it's going to be an issue. And then once we have, we're close, this is where I, again, I should have drilled out the hand and put a paper clip in for a little bit of extra uh, grip. Uh, but so you can see more close to being able to just say, you know, this will fit right in here. If I can get my thumb out of the shadow. Um, I just need to finish slicing some pieces out of here and make sure that there is uh, enough uh, flat area for the whole thing to bond to. Okay. And then I think I noticed I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work on the hand. Uh, all right, we may be switching gears a little bit and showing you how to drill this out. All right. So one second, I'm going to grab a couple extra tools. We'll talk about them. And I'm, this is just going to make life a little bit easier uh, in the long run. So I'll be right back. We'll finish this up with an extra step in there. All right, back. See, that didn't take very long at all, did it? All right, so what I have here, uh, many of you may or may not know, I have some extra magnets stuck to it. That's what partially what I have. Um, I have, they call it a pin vise. I tend to call it a hand drill, um, but really it's... Um, it's a, it's a hand drill. Um, I'm not sure what they originally used it for that they called it a pin vise, but it's got a um, little cross hatched piece of brass in here. And that's what your drill bit fits into. Um, 
and then you screw this in to tighten it down. So I push this little real thin drill bit down into there, tighten this all the way down. Uh, and then once I'm tight, it's pretty solid in there. It doesn't move around. Um, this is a nice one. I don't remember where I picked this up. If this was, I think this was potentially a hobby specific one off some site. I'm not even sure why I've kept the uh, pocket clip in there because I certainly have never clipped it into my pocket once. Um, one thing I do like about this one, if you can find, it's nice, this cap, the end cap comes off and then you can fit a bunch of extra drills bits in there. And you can see I've got a couple uh, different sizes. So it's a nice place to keep all these little tiny drill bits which are really easy to lose um, or misplace if you drop or just push somewhere and then it gets knocked somewhere else onto the floor or whatever. Um, so essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill into the plastic by just spinning this. This is easier to do uh, once it's still on the bolter. This is kind of a call it an audible here. Um, but I want to aim for the center of the hand here. And sometimes what I'll actually do is use a, an exacto knife and carefully find this roughly the center. And then I'm just going to make a little divot. So by spinning the exacto knife again, careful, you don't want it to slip and hit your finger. But now I know when I start drilling with the bit, it's going to go into that spot uh, and not wander closer to the edge. So I'm just going to spin this and let it go in there. You don't want to push hard. Let the drill bit, believe it or not, I was a machinist for a few years, let the drill bit do the work um, as you just spin and it will, uh, it will cut in there. So don't push on this. These drill bits cannot take a ton of uh, pressure. You can see how thin they are from here. Uh, but you can see now that it's just pulling stuff out of and not just gentle, firm, constant pressure as I spin it. Um, and then you don't want to, you don't have to go super deep in here. Obviously be careful. Um, it's easy sometimes to go a little zealous with this and uh, drill out in the other end. Uh, we don't want to do that. Then we'd be starting over. I'd be clipping another bolter off the sprue, etc., etc. Okay. So what I like to do, uh, once I have what I think is deep enough is I'll just take my thumbnail, press it up against the, the piece I'm drilling into, and then I'll pull the piece off. And now I can see that's how far I've drilled in there. Um, and that's perfectly sufficient for what I need to do. I don't have to go real deep. So that's plenty for that. Okay, so once I've cleaned out all the crap, the dust and the scum, um, we're gonna go with a absolute 100% ordinary paper clip. This is not special. Uh, it's your, I think it's your standard size paper clip. I bought, I don't know, I think like 300 of them in a box from some store target probably uh, for, you know, a buck 50 or something. I don't know. It wasn't expensive. Uh, we're just going to find the end and straighten it out. So it doesn't have to be real straight unless you end up trying to be a perfectionist like I am, which will, I will try not to do on camera, not too much, but you just want it kind of straightened out a little bit. So there we have this. And the idea here now is we're going to take this, this gives me a little handle for my, my hands to hold on to, and we're going to slide uh, this into there. Um, with the addition of a little super glue, which I haven't added yet. But now, well, once it's super glued on there, I'll be able to um, hold this and hold this, and I won't be um, fumbling and dropping it and blocking the shot with my fingers and stuff. So um, there's that. I'm just gonna do trim up the hole a little bit, because what I don't want is a little bit of extra crap to be in the way when I go to glue this to the model finally and uh, mess up the joint. All right, so easiest thing I found to do Grab your, grab your lid, throw it uh, on the ground, on the mat and knock all your models around. Definitely do that. Um, once we have that, we will uh, shake the glue down to the tip. Now you don't need a ton. You don't want a ton at all. So I'm just gonna kind of dip this in. I'm gonna try and get a bubble to show up at the end here. There it is. And then I'm just gonna run this through there. So I've got a little blob on the end, that's all. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but it's not a lot. Uh, and then once that's done, find the hand, slide this in, and then what we're gonna do, uh, and it won't take long, is just leave that sit somewhere like that. Uh, and then I'm just gonna pick this up, I'm gonna see where I was at with uh, this as the super glue sets, so I don't wanna uh, jostle it around a ton right, right away. 
that's gonna fall off and then I'm gonna glue my fingers to things, potentially the model, it's gonna be fun. All right, so I think this is really close. Um, you can see a little bit up on the tip here. Um, and this is, you know, you can be super exact. A lot of this is not gonna come out in the, you're not gonna see a lot of this join at all. Um, I could probably throw my force down on the table and have somebody pick up each model and look and tell me which one was this was done to and which one it wasn't and they would probably struggle um, because it's, it, it, it hides pretty well okay so we're looking for roughly that 90 degrees here um, it's pretty good it's pretty close uh, I'm gonna gently I'm not gonna manhandle this too much but she, yeah she's hardening up pretty good so now what I can do uh, hopefully this comes out as much more photogenic than what I was trying to do before. Maybe not. Maybe we're just going to keep dropping stuff. Is uh, hold it like this and now I can actually like slide them together and test. Oh yeah, look at that. I think we're going to be okay. Uh, everything seems to clip in pretty good. Um, and then you also want to check the other side because especially in this case, if you're doing like a weapon swap uh, where it's two-handed and it's going to be pulled up to the Marine's chest, it doesn't really matter because you won't see the backside, but in this case, it's a pistol. You will absolutely see the back, best backside, so uh, I'm going to flip it over and look, and that looks pretty darn good right there. Pretty excited about that. So um, we will kind of, I think I see a small spot I want to shave on here um, now that I've tested it. But uh, other than that, we're real close. So uh, it looks to me like there's just a little bit of extra material back on here and again I gotta keep in mind that this isn't um, uh, completely dry yet so uh, the super glue and uh, I'm gonna be very careful with how much I'm shaving here because I really don't want to jam that point into my finger but I'm just lightly shaving that off like so uh, there we go and then of course there's a little bit extra super super glue residue at the end of the uh, paper clip so you know how that goes uh, that's holding on to everything and then we're just I saw a little bit where the join wasn't quite as flat as I wanted to there. all right one last test fit dry fit this is part of that cutter cut twice measure measure once cut twice no cut once measure twice cut once that's the one wow that's amazing so that looks pretty awesome I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see that but that is just a nice smooth fit there um, I would bet money that people would not, once this is all together and painted, once you can't see the difference between the um, two materials, you're not even going to be able to tell that that was at all ever uh, an issue. So that's my gun swap basically done. Um, we're going to, I'm going to clean up the area a little bit here. We're going to come back and then we're going to uh, assemble and uh, it's going to look awesome. And I'm super excited to have my Diabolist assembled and ready to paint. So we'll be right back. All right, uh, cleaned up a little bit uh, and I guess partially organized. I'm gonna start stripping some of these tools out here. I'm not gonna need the clippers anymore. I always like to keep the X-Acto knife uh, handy because sometimes it's nice when you're super gluing, you can get in there and kind of move a piece a little bit um, without gluing your fingers to the whole thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on um, the base here, the problem is if I put this down in the wrong place, uh, it creates a nice long shadow across everything with the lighting I have. So I'm gonna try and keep it out of the way, but you know, I, it's hard to concentrate on all these things at once. For me, it's hard to concentrate on one thing at once. Okay, uh, we're gonna do the basic build here um, and uh, kind of start, I guess, from the ground up. I'm gonna use that super glue. So you gotta pay attention now. Um, and unfortunately, the way this ends up working out, uh, for the most part, we're going to be using super glue for the rest of the time. The chest piece is resin, and that's kind of the center piece for anybody. That, for you. Hopefully, you guys have all assembled Marines um, at some point or another. It's kind of the center piece. The arms go here, the head goes there, the legs go to the bottom. Um, and because this is resin and the, everything else that is going to touch that is... Um, plastic we're gonna have to use super glue not the end of the world but just be aware that the the uh, plastic act, uh, activated glue 
uh, the plastic glue from Citadel or any of the other testers, whatever you're using, isn't going to work for this part of it. So I've got my trusty uh, Gorilla Super Glue Gel because I do like this stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a, a good bubble on here. And I want this... Um, most of the join doesn't happen at the top. The most of the join is going to happen around the edges here of the kind of the ball that the hip uh, piece forms as they, the way they cast it. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick this on here. In this case, um, he's fairly static, but this left leg is forward a little bit. Um, so I'm assuming he's bracing and I'm actually going to point the uh, chest piece slightly in that direction. Um, there's, you can make an argument for any direction. There's not a right or wrong way to do that. And I'm just holding it for that good 10 seconds. Um, and then when I, hopefully I let go, it doesn't go flying off. Awesome. So um, we've got that locked in and ready to go off the top. There we go. Um, so that's the net, first piece. Now you're going to want to wait. I have just a little bit, a little bit of scrap uh, resin in here. Um, you're going to want to wait just a second before you start trying to hold the arms on there and such. Um, cause as you, as you push on here and push on there, it may break this relatively weak bond we have started here. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the dogs are barking upstairs. Um, so hopefully, uh, they're not barking so loud that you can't hear over that. Uh, what I am going to do, uh, though is put, um, so there's a couple ways I've done this before over the years, depending on the model and what I'm looking at. Um, there's an argument to be made to put the backpack on so that you can make sure the arms and the arm pads fit around it. Um, but then also, especially in this case, because this has got the extended kind of wings on the exhaust jets of the backpack here, um, it's also going to be in the way a ton um, as I'm trying to assemble the arms around it. I'm torn on it. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the backpack on now. But, um, you know, just, it's something you'll have to think about um, as you do this. Um, I think I might have touched on it earlier, but I will just reiterate or uh, maybe talk about it for the first time if this is the first time. Um, in this case, uh, this backpack is for a 40K Space Marine, uh, and this resin piece uh, is not. And the way uh, the resin piece is the Forge World, uh, this is just the Forge World uh, Ward Bearer upgrade, chest upgrade piece. Um, but essentially what I'm trying to say is the there's a rounded bump that was here um, that was made to fit into the standard backpacks. I don't have one to show you, but this didn't have um, the, the same hole, um, so that wasn't going to work. So I've shaved that bump off, which is fine. It's not a big deal. Um, structurally, it might be a little weaker. Uh, but what you do have to pay attention to is that you get the backpack on there straight. And because you're super gluing it, you have that very, very, very short window of when the super glue starts to set. So I'm um, going to have to mess around with that and make sure um, that it works um, and is straight on the model. Just trying to look and see if I've, if I want to stick with my decision, if I do want this to be um, on now or if I want to wait till the end really just I don't think I don't think it's going to be in the way so we're actually going to set this off um, to the side and we're going to focus on the arms for now um, I think long term that's going to be an issue um, with the the way the winged jets being in the way okay so in this case the sword goes in the left arm or the bent arm here um, and we're really um, kind of he's well, the goal is he's just going to be kind of holding it um, facing forward. He's not really brandishing it there. He's going to be pointing with his right hand. He's going to be pointing the Serpenta. Um, so this is kind of the relaxed arm or the off arm or the guard arm, um, depending on what you're talking about. So I'm not super worried about the orientation for this one. So I'm just going to put some super glue onto the arm pad here. As always with super glue, a little bit goes a long way. Um, some people think, oh, I want it to stick. I don't ever want it to break. So I'm going to put a ton of super glue on there. Not necessarily always the best piece, the best case um, for that. So now uh, what I have is uh, the sword is just going to kind of sit here um, like so. And uh, I think uh, ideally he's going to kind of be looking off in that direction. 
Oh, all right, let's do this on camera. He's gonna be looking off in that direction uh, across his right leg and out with the pistol slightly. So the sword shouldn't be sitting in his way. Uh, and then um, we're going to um, set him off to the side for a second. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and make this join so that when we're ready, uh, we can use this. Uh, so we're going to uh, put a little bit of glue again. A little bit goes a long way. Um, I know this is a small join. You know, it's easy to panic and I don't want it to break. So again, put the glue on there. You get too much in there uh, and then the surface is never really touch and bond and it's fairly easy to snap off. So we're going to pick this up, maybe. We're gonna pick this up and slide this in place. I actually got a little more glue on there than I intended, but I think we'll be okay. You can see it's a little slippery. So I'm just gonna risk it and uh, wipe some of the excess glue off. Um, and generally I like to have a Kleenex nearby when I do this, so I have a place to wipe that. And I'm not gluing myself to models, but there we go. So we're just gonna hold on for a second while that hardens. And uh, we have, you know, at least a tentative bond. Ooh, she is. Not wanting to go today. Uh, have a good, good surface contact at least. I think I just got too much glue. Yeah, I just got too much glue on there, so there was too much surface area. Um, but there you go. Uh, that's what we're looking at for that bond. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way the shaving came out. Uh, for the most part, you're never, um, unless you knew that this was uh, a conversion you'll never know that that was uh, cut out and you know another hand facing the opposite direction opposite direction was pushed in so uh, pretty excited about that we're just going to set that down um, off to the side here let that kind of cure just a little bit while i mess around with the arm we'll be coming back to it very shortly so here is uh we're back to our model we're going to start getting this arm ready and in place uh, so kind of Take a look at another quick idea of what we're looking at. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be pointing off in that direction, so the head will be turned ever so slightly um, to kind of be looking down the barrel, down the arm, down the barrel of the gun. Okay, uh, I don't think this is gonna end up being a super uh, crazy pose. Got a little extra glue again. Uh, sometimes the that applicator, unfortunately, the one downside to the Gorilla Glue is sometimes it's hard to get any out and other times it just comes out far beyond what you would ever need. Okay, so there we go. And I just always like to do a quick check to see if there's enough contact area for the shoulder pads. I think we're going to be just fine. Um, sometimes if you get the arm too far this way, then the shoulder pad won't sit, but I think we're going to be just fine with this I think it'll look great uh, one of the things I love about the Space Marines uh, pose and the shoulder pads is the shoulder pads forgive a lot of um, misplacing of the arms if it's in a slightly different direction um, it really um, it hides a lot it can't you, you know you can't really tell that there is an issue uh, if it's off a little bit all right uh, so there's that uh, we're going to go ahead I'm going to slot the head into the hole here so yeah he's going to be kind of looking just like that in that direction um, probably uh, uh, getting ready to vaporize some loyalist ultramarine scum one of the blue boys so a little bit of glue on the head join there we'll pop it into the hole and then I just want to look from the front and make sure oh yeah that's gonna that's gonna look good Make sure it's in there. Uh, not sure the joint, the, the way the head um, joint fits there together. I'm not sure there's enough surface area this may not cure uh, or, or harden up in there. I don't know, there's some super glue contact. So the head seems to be sitting. We're, I think we're good there. Um, so we've got the arms on, the head's on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Put the shoulder pads in and then uh, basically cross my fingers and hope that the uh, backpack will fit in. I think it'll be fine. I'm not too worried about that. 
because um, if I again if I hold the backpack in here uh, there's plenty of leeway oh yeah there's plenty of room and I just don't want to try and put the shoulder pads in afterwards uh, so we're gonna get those shoulder pads in now so um, in this case we're gonna go ahead and put the trusty super glue off to the side and put my cap on I tend to forget that quite a bit and uh, we're gonna get the plastic glue out now I've been having some trouble with the applicator on this one getting glued in here I've had this one for a while uh, and uh, it keeps getting stuck in there uh, and then I'm just gonna use the tip of this to kind of clear out that tip here and hope that I can get some glue out uh, otherwise you know it's fun to watch me on camera trying to get glue out right that's why you guys tune in that's definitely what you're here for go ahead and leave comments uh, and let me know because I can make that happen because that's a, a, a large amount of my hobby time is trying to unplug glue and uh, get it to flow okay so I'm just trying to put some of this glue on and this is that uh, this is the one that's gonna bond to the the two plastic pieces together and really um, make that um, semi-permanent uh, bent fusion of uh, the two pieces I have gotten them back apart before um, but it's never a smooth uh, separation there's always a little bit of oh what's the word I want it's always a little um, rough and you can see uh, where the breaks happen so that's what we're looking at so far uh, super excited about him he looks just uh, Looks like he's fallen to chaos for a little while there. He's uh, not trying to hide it anymore. He's not uh, being all secretive about it. Uh, I'm gonna bust out the super glue again. We're gonna hit the backpack and then we're gonna finish up by putting the weapons on. So again, we're back to super glue because the backpack happens to be plastic and the uh, chest piece is resin. You gotta use that super glue to form that bond. Um, so putting it across here. And uh, in this case, because I don't have the um, alignment pin what I'm going to try and do is line up this line right here with that line across there and hopefully uh, it's level it's, you know certainly don't want a uh, crooked backpack right so gonna do that real quick I'm just gonna look at it from the front oh I think I, I think I nailed that one so there's that hopefully you guys can see that that looks pretty good um, yeah I like that all right, so now we're getting down to the weapons. We'll start with the easy one. Again, we're going resin to plastic. Gotta use that super glue. I'm sure I'm uh, beating a dead horse here, most of you. Many of you uh, probably know this, but just in case, uh, I'll save you some frustration of trying to glue uh, um, resin and plastic together with plastic glue. Um, so in this case, I just, I'm just trying to get a little bit of glue on the, uh, the flat piece here, but also on this little nub that kind of comes up and covers the wrist joint. Um, just to give it a little extra surface area uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and hold that in there try and hold him somewhere in a way that you can see uh, it's not quite not quite set yet there we go so yeah that's kind of the pose I was going for like I said his guard arm um, he's just kind of covering that side of his body with the weapon as he aims out that way um, so he can be ready for an attack those dastardly ultramarines uh, don't want to get uh, a sucker punched so there's that last piece we're gonna have to deal with we're hoping now with all that time passed that this is um, set up pretty nice so the cool thing about this trick with the paper clip uh, one, this paper clip super reusable. All I'm going to do uh, is make sure I have a firm grip on the handpiece and then uh, apply ever so slight pressure rotating uh, so that I can spin the thing and then that glue will just break right loose. It's not really meant to deal with torsion pressure like that. Um, it's mostly uh, back and forth pressure. Uh, I can't think of the name of it now. Wow. So there's that. Pops right out. You could almost fold it back over and use it as a paper clip. I'll use it for this purpose again. Uh, before too long so it'll just hang out uh, and then what I'm gonna do using my trusty hobby knife I'm just gonna go in and pop this uh, super glue um, bubble off here that kind of forms when you uh, push the paper clip into the hole uh, 
so you got a nice, basically I just want that nice smooth piece here so that uh, the join is nice and solid. And uh, the wonderful news uh, of this is, is we are going plastic to plastic. So we're back to our really solid um, plastic glue that's gonna create that really just great um, join. If it wasn't, what I would actually think about doing is uh, mimicking this hole in, whew, in here, drilling a hole in here, and then using just a tiny clipped piece of that paper clip, uh, we'll super glue it in there, and then super glue it in here. Um, and if you ever have a weapon that keeps snapping off like that at the wrist joint, that's absolutely a viable um, so solution. Oh, wrong glue. Wrong glue. I just said we can use the super, the uh, plastic glue, the good plastic glue, and then uh, picked up the super glue. So we're gonna throw the plastic glue on here. Come on. There we go. Good. Uh, I love this applicator, uh, except for that one. It decides that it isn't gonna come out, and you squeeze harder and harder, and then all of a sudden it all comes out. That's less fun. So we're just gonna join that in like so. Give it a few seconds to fuse up. And then perhaps give it a few more seconds um, to make that uh, connection and not fall off. That's pretty, not quite there yet. We're gonna give it just a little longer. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that. So that is uh, the basics of converting a little bit. Um, primarily what we've done is kit bashed. We've just taken uh, pieces from a kit, different kits, and we've stuck them together in ways that um, weren't necessarily the way intentioned, intended way, intentioned way. Um, but uh, it certainly came out pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I will um, pull him off this base and get him set on something and do just a little bit better of a close up. All right. <clears throat> All right, here is the finished product. Try to get you a little bit side to side. Uh, just kind of aiming that Volkite Serpenta down. Got that sword kind of held in that offhand guard position. So that's really what we're looking for. We've taken a bunch of different kits. We've kind of stuck them all together, done a little bit of cutting and modifying to make it all work. And uh, there we have it. Hopefully that was easy enough to follow and you can um, do your own work on there, build from there. All right, hopefully that uh, helps you out, moves you down the road towards converting your own stuff. GW uh, makes some amazing kits uh, and they look really good together but sometimes adding your own flair and pulling pieces from different kits or even outside of GW altogether under the same model can really yield some amazing results. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that, uh, the Diabolist. I'm looking forward to using him. Uh, if you uh, and did enjoy this, please, you know, subscribe, like, comment. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, anything, you know, to help out. That helps. I appreciate that. Uh, comment if you you know if you if you liked it if you didn't like it if you want to see something else or more uh, and again let me know if uh, if you um, use this and create your own model I'd love to see it uh, inspiration comes in a lot of different forms and really kind of seeing what other people do with their models kind of really spikes that in interest in me too so I love it thanks for watching I appreciate it have a good one.